Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and the Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back with something a little bit new. This is going to be a digital critique and uh, sort of overview of a piece. Uh, this particular piece you may rec might recognize from a uh, recent uh, Cinderblock Studios Live episode. This is from uh, artist uh, Suku Bain, uh, and he's calling this cute and cuddly, sort of an alien uh, lizardy creature. So what I've decided to do with this is I want to take it into Photoshop and sort of kind of redesign it, redraw uh, it a little bit, uh, sort of tracing over the original image, showing some of the uh, initial flaws and some of the things that uh, really could be improved on. Now, if you know my work and you know the stuff that I do, you know that uh, people and animals and creatures really are not my thing, so I'm going to try and avoid talking about in a, any uh, overall anatomy uh, issues that I'm seeing. I just want to maybe touch on a couple things here and there and uh, just play around with uh, lighting, uh, overall composition, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so, from what I see initially with this piece, uh, so you have this alien head uh, type uh, creature here. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out what this section was. I realized it was the alien creatures holding some sort of a, a pistol, a weapon of sorts, and uh, everything else. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion with the legs back in the, behind the head, but we'll play with that as we go along. And then there, there is the tail, which seems to be more of a flat, ribbony uh, type tail, and uh, we'll play with around, around with different things like that as well. So what I want to do with this first is I've made an original copy to sit as an overlay, and I'm going to be playing around with uh, another copy underneath. So I'm going to start out uh, just kind of simplifying everything. I'm going to take out the background, uh, just to kind of give myself uh, uh, an understanding of what I'm working with. Just try and turn everything black and white. Okay, so now that we're in black and white, uh, I can see that there is a lot of disconnect here. There's uh, way more dark values than light values. There's no real clear lighting. Everything is just sort of in its own little uh, world, so to speak. Uh, so I'm actually going to take this layer and uh, tone it, or tint it, or make it more transparent, rather, uh, just to sort of be there as a uh, guide. And I'm going to create a new layer and start playing around with some uh, new lines here. So I'll grab a brush. I'm going to grab something, I'll just grab my base ground and make everything a little bit easier. And get my settings up, and there we are. So, start sketching over top of this, and I want to keep most of the original lines. I'm not uh, super concerned with uh, uh, crisp lines, but I do want to keep things fairly uniform, I guess I would say. And I'm playing around. I, I want to really only take the lines that I feel are absolutely necessary. Um, a lot of these lines, uh, especially in here, I feel like they're trying to be detail, but uh, not quite uh, there in a lot of ways. brush a little bit smaller here. And I using in Photoshop here, I don't know, normally sketch as much in Photoshop since I'm more used to, to sketchbook pro so I can rotate my uh, or sketchbook express so I can rotate my canvas. Okay, so here in the original the where the tail meets the body is sort of the body kind of sticks out a little bit further, and I promised I wouldn't touch anatomy too much, but in most animals there isn't the difference between the leg and the tail. It usually just kind of flows a little bit easier uh, right across. So I'd like to try and do uh, a similar thing by just connecting the tail closer to the body and just keeping everything more uh, tight and together without really thinking about them as two separate en entities, sort of as the butt and the tail. It's just sort of the, the tail kind of comes right out of the backside of the, of the creature. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the rest of my uh, outlining and time lapse, and we'll be right back when I uh, finish that.
All right, so I've just about finished my uh, sort of draw over anyhow. You can see what it's like there without the uh, lines over top. And uh, I do want to apologize right now for a little thing I'm just uh, starting to notice is that because I'm using my screen recorder right now, uh, my brush performance is a little bit shoddy, uh, so my lines aren't quite as crisp as they could be, and there's a little bit of uh, sort of dottiness uh, to my individual strokes. So uh, with this in mind, one thing I want to bring up uh, before I get too far into this is line weight. Um, the thicker your lines are, um, you want to think about those lines as being closer uh, to the viewer um, in in some way. So you think the, the the larger section of the toes, you'll probably want those lines to be a little bit thicker, uh, sort of a forced perspective thing. You're just having them stand out a little bit more, and that's all I'm doing here is I'm just accentuating a few of those lines. I would imagine the head uh, would have a fewer a few um, more uh, distinct lines in that same uh, degree. Uh, now one thing I did notice from the original images, uh, or the original image, is well, while this hand has sort of four uh, fingers or maybe toes, the hand that's holding the gun only has sort of two that are showing. Now personally, uh, again, you know, I'm not one to talk about anatomy here, However, I kind of get the feeling that maybe you should see uh, f another finger towards the back, uh, kind of wrapping around uh, the gun a little bit, but uh, I'm not really going to touch that. I'm just going to let, let it you know, be as it is, but it is one thing I noticed. I would think that maybe another one around the handle or another one up towards uh, the top or the back would kind of make it stand out a little bit more. But uh, So let's head back to the sketch. and. Uh, kind of just cleaning up my lines a little bit right now. I'm not doing too, too much, but enough to kind of get the idea of what uh, the general feel of the character sort of looks like. Now, from this point, uh, one thing I noticed from the original is that there really isn't a whole lot of shadow. There's not a clear light source here. I'm not entirely sure what's in front, what's in back. I mean, I know, I mean, there's a little bit of overlap from the head, but it's very flat of an image. So just within my sketch, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my brush size down a little bit further again. And I'm thinking that for this piece, the light source should kind of be coming from uh, not quite the top right, but sort of uh, up the upper right section. So everything uh, in that same uh, degree should uh, sort of relate to that. But you also want to think that some of the body parts are going to be casting shadows over top of some of the other ones. So I've put my, the uh, the gray layer back, uh, just to kind of give myself uh, an idea of where things are at. And for this, I'm going to shade uh, a little bit on the edges, uh, the left edges of a lot of these different things. And I'm just basically doing a little bit of uh, uh, hatching and probably a little bit of cross hatching I'll be doing, um, just to kind of give the indications of some early shadow areas. I'm actually not really sure what to do with the legs in the back here. It's very... like I'm not sure, I'm like, okay, is this leg here or is this one there? It's Maybe there's a line that uh, doesn't belong. I'm not really sure. Uh, this is actually kind of hard for me to, to look at. I'm thinking uh, sort of this leg, is, the, the back leg here is sort of more tucked underneath and that sort of comes from this side, but again, I'm kind of just guessing here. Uh, it's really hard to tell just from the original image. Uh, there's sort of a, a line coming out this way, or, or uh, maybe a piece of the leg. I'm not quite sure how that fits. I think I'm actually going to erase it uh, for this uh, individual section, just to see maybe if that helps. It's sort of already kind of helping me a little bit. So maybe this uh, oval is from this leg, and then the section behind it is from the other one. In which case, this is a little more lopsided. It would have to come up a little bit more, but again, we're just playing with value here. Uh, so I just would like to add a little bit underneath, and maybe a little bit around this edge.
then up here I noticed the way the original image is here the leg is sort of designed to be sit in front or at least kind of come up on top around uh, the body a little bit uh, plus there's some shading and a little bit of difference there on his back so I want to have a little difference there in where the leg is meeting the rest of the body so I want to have a little bit of shading here to kind of offset and make that particular leg stand out. There's also the idea that this leg is sort of casting a little bit of shadow on the body as well. And then the head would have a little bit of shadowing underneath it. Again, uh, offsetting everything. Uh, this leg's pretty good. There's a maybe a little bit in the fingers here to, distinct the, to distinguish between the uh, individual fingers, again, or toes, I'm <laughs> really just speculating here. Uh, and again, we're trying to keep in mind with our, our light source being on the right. So uh, a little bit on the fingers just to think about that uh, light source. And again, you know, I'm not an expert on creatures. So a lot of this uh, is really uh, relatively minor stuff, but enough that you're kind of building up the contrast and making your shape stand out. Uh, in which case, you know, this is can be done on a you know really basic stick figure or uh, something uh, ridiculously complex. It doesn't uh, quite matter as uh, in terms of the subject or how well the anatomy or, or whatever a uh, subject looks like. I mean, this is just sort of a little bit of polish and refining work uh, to be sure that the uh, whatever subject you have sort of stands out. Uh, the original image, image sort of had a little bit of shine on the, on the, the weapon, so I want to try and keep that a little bit, at least in my sketch version here. Once we start throwing a little color over it, maybe we'll add a little extra detail to it. But And the gun, if the, if the skin of the alien is very dark, uh, as we see here, the green, uh, this purple is about the same uh, value as the uh, as, as the hand here, and that's causing a lot of confusion uh, to the viewer. And from that you want to add, a, maybe make the gun darker, or make the uh, or make the skin of the alien uh, a little bit um, either darker or lighter, just to have some offset here. Because with the original image you see there's a little bit of a maybe a distinction. There's darks here, but it's like, is it part of this? Is it part of that? Really confused my, my, uh, my eye a little bit at first. So just want to make note of that. And just kind of adding a couple extra little lines up and around. And then the tail, kind of study this a little bit more here, kind of varies a little bit. I'm not sure if this, if the tip is its own uh, additive, if the, if the tail is ribbony, uh, then it'll need a darker edge and a lighter edge. Um, and I'd like to try and stick with that, because that's sort of what I see from it. Um, if this was not uh, intended to be a more ribbony tail, uh, it wouldn't fold uh, quite in the same manner that you're seeing here, sort of this crossing over. Um, but uh, again, I'm just basing it off of what, I've s what I'm seeing, what my initial impressions are, and uh, going from there. So if maybe if the tail is ribbony, but it kind of fleshes out a little bit more uh, towards the tip, that gives it the tail more of a like a knife type weapon with a natural defense, maybe almost like a scorpion. Uh, so you're gonna have a little bit of that. So again, we're just you know cleaning up our edges a little bit making sure we're paying attention to where lighting is, uh, at least initial lighting, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take away that uh, 
initial dark layer and just have it on my oversketch now. And as you can see, it's already sort of gathering a little bit of strength. Now, the original was sort of uh, in implied to be somewhat both finished and somewhat of a sketch. Uh, from what I can tell originally, I mean, some of the lines are really nice, they're really nice and smooth, but I think feel like all of the lines are a little bit big. I think uh, for an initial initial sketch, uh, as I, you see in, in my overlay here, uh, there is... Uh, it, it's thinner, it feels more like pencil. Uh, feels more... Uh, I don't even know how to say it, really, but uh, there's something... And obviously there's the difference in... Uh, style and technique, but again, you know, you're looking at uh, just keeping your lines uh, not necessarily super clean, but at least uh, distinct enough that uh, the shapes are there without kind of having, like, oh, I didn't erase this line, so I'm conf a little confused on the way this is supposed to look or, or whatever. So I'm just going to clean up a couple of my edges a little bit. I have some tails hanging out a little bit but uh, nothing major. I just realized I didn't shade much over here. I had a little extra around the foot. I have this line, which I guess is a bend, in which case, from the original, these two lines kind of stick very close together. Um, so you have, uh, if there is that overlap, uh, with the leg, you probably want to ha bring it over just a little bit, bit extra, and then the one behind it will kind of wrap around behind it. Um, it may not sit like that, I don't want to say in real life, because this creature doesn't actually exist, but uh, again, if you're having these overlapping lines, you want the one on top to be thicker than the one on the bottom, and you want it to uh, at least be a little more varied in that it uh, won't show up and, and and actually be on top of the other structure, rather than uh, sort of hiding behind it. That's a it's a minor thing again. You know, I'm not any expert in anatomy, but it's about understanding a little bit of contrast and a little bit uh, of just general uh, line work as well. Alright, I'm going to say that sketch uh, looks pretty good for now, and I'm going to start throwing a little bit of color underneath it. So I'm going to grab another layer and put it underneath uh, the layer I've got going on, and I'd like to try and keep to the original color scheme at least, you know, a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of... there, there are some issues with uh, the color choices here, but again, not going to get into that too far. So I'm going to start actually with the eyes, and the eyes are a bit of a green color, and I'm actually going to grab that with my uh, my uh, selector tool, just so I can stick with you know what the original looked like. I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger and start uh, just painting that color into the eyes. Okay, now that that color's in the eyes, uh, one thing you notice about eyes uh, in general, whether they be insect eyes, um, creature eyes, human eyes, whatever. Uh, there's more than just one color uh, within them. Uh, so you have, you know, let's say, personally, I mean, me, uh, Ben has blue eyes, uh, but there are a lot more complex colors within it. So you have the uh, the pupil, which is black. So I'm going to take, uh, take this green and kind of pull it down, uh, grabbing a very dark, not uh, completely pitch black, but a little bit darker, and just kind of very lightly roll that around in the eye, around the pupil, to give uh, the indication of something a little bit darker. And this green, it's its not a great green, it's more of a, like a grayish aqua, almost, you know, and I'm not super thrilled with it. I'm going to grab something a little bit lighter and a little bit bluer, uh, if we're kind of going for that same color scheme, and I'm going to make my brush a little, a little bit thinner, and kind of from that center, just kind of pull out a little bit and do a cl more of a classic central eye kind of look. I mean, if this is designed to be more like a bug eye, then, you know, obviously 
a little different, but again, I don't kn know all of the initial intention uh, around and surrounding it. I'm going to go back to that dark and throw a little bit of that on the edges, actually, of this one. And, uh, and uh, a little bit more on the other. Make that a little bigger. And I'm really not pressing much al at all on the tablet. I'm just kind of keeping things uh, uniform. Fairly easy. Brown like that, and I'm going to come back to something similar to that initial green. And again, I paint right back over top of it. And down into the center a little bit as well. I don't want to completely destroy everything, but you know, it gives a little bit more of a, a painted look. And now, the other thing with eyes is that uh, there's going to be a shine depending on where the light's coming from, and as well as the fact that eyes are usually at least a little bit wet, so to speak, so they don't dry out and die. It's a, a sort of a uniform thing that's around in all living creatures. So I'm going to just throw a little bit of white on the edge of this one. Give it a second little dot. And you can learn this by studying um, actual eyes and doing those things. On the other side, I'm just going to throw a tiny little bit. Shouldn't need much, though, since a little bit out of that light. And just about like that we have uh, more defined eyes a little bit. You can throw maybe a couple extra little white lines in there. Maybe a little bit around the edges to kind of give the indication of uh, more of a glossy look. But for the most part, you know, it's fairly minimum. Uh, you don't need much at all. Alright, so moving forward with, with uh, our color, when you're, you're coloring or sort of painting uh, back into uh, any kind of drawing, you always want to work from back to front. Uh, in this case, I'm only going to work, be working on one layer, uh, so it make, actually makes some things a little bit easier. So from the initial concept, we've got uh, this green color from the eyes is sort of matching uh, the color of the legs, but the sort of front arms are a different color, and that's a little bit confusing. Uh, but I do want to keep things fairly uh, close to the original uh, color concept. Uh, again, just trying to keep things uh, uniform as close to uh, what I at least imagined the initial concept was. So from this point, I'm going to come through and uh, play around with the back legs as well as a little bit in the front. And I'm not going to choose a color that's identical to the eyes, but I do want to play with something that's very similar. So I imagine that this creature, if the eyes are closer to a blue, that the legs uh, would be closer to a yellow. So I'm going to drag that over a little bit and have a... I still want to keep it with a little bit in that sort of grayer, uh, toned down color. And I think I'll use that color as my, uh, as my base. That seems to work. This uh, sort of this lighter greenish color as my base. That feels pretty good. So from there, I will take that green and start working it into the legs. So from here, uh, for my highlight color, I'm going to go a little bit lighter into the uh, pure color and make it a little bit yellower. So ever so slightly, I'm just adding a little bit of this, uh, col uh, a little bit of these highlights over top of uh, some of the edges to where my light would be coming from. And when I get to this stuff in the back here, you know, I'm grabbing, uh, you know, a little bit on the edge, but I'm not going into where I sort of decided where my shadows were going to be. Uh, so I'm just kind of playing around a little bit, and again where this sort of head in the back of the leg is. Not entirely sure what was going on there, but uh, just doing my best to kind of map that out. So on this other side we have a lighter section here. And on this side. And around and underneath. And over here this elbow is really close to where the light would be, so I'm going to add a lot more light here. And it just kind of dissipates a little bit as you go along, maybe a little bit up in the shoulder where it's sticking out a little bit more. It's kind of like, uh, you know, if your mom said, you know, put, put sunscreen on, make sure you stick it where the sun hits. Uh, same deal. <laughs> I 
Alright, and with those highlights, we're actually going to take that same sort of brighter color we're using, drag it down into a deep green, and where I had my sort of cross hatching lines, I'm just going to go over real lightly and uh, just add a little bit of a more of a shadow into some of these areas. And again, light's coming from uh, the right side, so the left side of these limbs are going to be darker. And, and the same thing as where it crosses underneath the other one, we we'll want it to be a little bit darker. And something I should point out from here is I'm kind of just keeping my textures roughly about the same. You know, the, my the stroke of my brush is you know f pretty similar uh, all around. If you're all going for a slightly more look, different look, something like that, once you get all these base colors in that I'm doing here, you can go back in and re-detail and play around with like scales and, and that kind of thing, but I'm not even uh, going to be remotely touching that today. Actually, this to be a finger, so that should stand out a little bit more from that. That should be a little darker where it crosses underneath that. And that looks like it's uh, faring pretty well. So next up, I'm going to be tackling uh, the main uh, body section, which seems to be sort of a uh, sort of deeper, more it's much bluer than the rest of the uh, the greener sections. Uh, so it has more of that, and what I can sort of see as the indications of some shadows here are much more of a, of a pure blue. So as I did before, I'm actually just going to take that color with the eyedropper and uh, grab that, uh, and I'm not uh, super thrilled with how dark this is, I'm actually going to take it up just a couple of shades lighter. Uh, so now going into uh, our colored version, we're going to go ahead and take our, our normal, normal round brush as we've been using, and just start filling that in. Alright, now that we have the uh, base tones just about taken care of, I'm going to do the same thing as before, get a highlight color and a shadow color. So the highlight color for this, uh, I'm going to just basically pull that blue up uh, into the light, and I actually want to pull it into the green a little bit more. Uh, kind of keep to that uh, original color scheme, original uh, concept, at least to, you know, again, what I've sort of interpreted as what it was uh, intended to look like. And again, you know, light's coming from the upper right. So we're going to go ahead and toss that in. So as before, we're going to be careful on exactly how much highlights we're adding uh, to any given creature or even scene. And I want to try and shape uh, the stroke of, of my brush a little bit uh, rounder to kind of capture the idea of that, um, of, the, of the creature a little bit more. And again, very simple shapes and, and, and strokes, just capturing uh, base color, really. This is probably a little bit too light of a highlight, I'm probably going to come back in a little just a little bit with a with that blue again and tone it down. And a little bit over by the gun. I'm actually not going to put any on that finger since it's hiding behind the, the pistol a little bit more. And I'm going to take uh, this and grab sort of closer to that original blue. And I want to just tone down that that fade a little bit more, make it more of a clean transition from the highlight into the, the main blue. And right about like that. And we're going to grab our dark color. So I'm just going to pull that into a deep blue. Alright, sorry about that. I had to plug my tablet back in to recharge it and I changed my settings a little bit when I did. But again, you know, we're just coming back into our shadows were and pulling around that uh, 
uh, initial color a little bit more. And again, see behind the uh, behind the head, you're going to get more of a shadow. Um, and I, you know, I'm not being super super thorough here. I'm just throwing in color, and once you'll see once at the end, uh, you know, you can go back in uh, once you've done at least the, all the major stuff and start working on your your more uh, detailed refinements, but uh, for the most part we're just looking at uh, general shape, general line, general color, contrast value, without worried, worrying too much about detail. A lot of people when they work and they, you know, they want to make a drawing, they want to sort of get to the detail-y, render -y, awesome parts, you know, right away, and uh, that's just, <laughs> that's just not how it works. So right about like that, we've got the main body structure. Now we have the tail, the head, and uh, the, the pistol to work on next. All right, so again, back to the uh, original image. You can see there's the sort of the head is sort of this deep purple color. Uh, it's sort of mixing with a deeper bluish black for the tail, and the pistol is sort of a uh, another interesting uh, purple. So for the pistol, at least in my version, I want to stick with that purple, but I actually want to make the whole thing a lot lighter because I do want to have a little bit of offset from uh, the weapon to uh, the creature that is holding it. Uh, so from here I'm just going to drop in a nice sort of base, uh, sort of light, toned up, uh, tinted up violet, uh, just for the main color of the weapon. Alright, so I've got the base color in for the weapon, and now, in addition to, you know, creatures and, and people, uh, I won't even begin to try and pretend that I know the first thing about, uh, you know, weapon design. But uh, based off of the original image, I can kind of get an idea of uh, what the overall idea was supposed to be. So, for the shadows, the uh, original shadows were more of a blue, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of tone my purple down to a blue, but I also want to make it a hell of a lot darker. Uh, these are sort of a lot more mid-tones here. I'm not seeing a whole lot of the distinct brightest brights and darkest darks. So from that, we're going to work on uh, our version of it, and I'm going to take my brush size down a little bit. And so the tip, from when I say the tip was going to be darker, and we'll let that be that. So maybe a, maybe it's a hole, you know, where the uh, uh, where the projectile, or maybe it's an energy beam that comes out of there. And we have uh, some shadows sort of underneath it a little bit, as well as uh, sort of on these sort of angles pointing in the other direction. So kind of captured that a little bit earlier uh, with some of the um, some of my my sketch lines. And then you have some, some sections that are just distinctly darker. And um, from that, it's, a lot of that is, you know, sort of early understanding of uh, the sort of the shininess that maybe a metal or a, even a plastic would give off. So I do actually I admire that about that. There's a lot of uh, sort of the early stages of that distinct contrast. So I want to kind of keep with that idea. And this was just sort of a darker color, maybe painted. Same thing with the, what looks like the sighting of it. This was just sort of a maybe an accessory. And then a little bit larger, this un whole underside was darker. And that's fairly easy to do. You just keep a light, light touch there on the tablet. Alright, and from there, I'm actually gonna, just going to take it up to a very, sticking with that sort of the blue, more blue purple, very, very bright. And we're going to throw in our uh, highlights to this. And um, for the f to create sort of a shine, in most cases you're going to see darkest darks and lightest lights right next to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a white line right next to that dark one to maybe give the idea of it's uh, maybe it's a little more shiny. Uh, and then throw in just some sort of my other more blurry, a little bit bigger there highlights to everything else. And that doesn't look. You know, too terrible. Uh, it could be a little bit better, but again, you know, I'm not uh, a weapons designer, and I'm also not playing around with uh, individual textures quite as much as I could. So 
So from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the head. Uh, the reason I wanted to do the weapon first is because the weapon sort of sits behind the head a little bit. In a lot of ways, I probably should have done uh, also the hands holding the weapon uh, after getting the purple finished. But, you know, too late now. So the head from the original images, our original image, again, nice sort of dark purpley color. So I'm just going to grab that with my dropper and start painting that in. Okay, now that we have that uh, base tone uh, purple on there, we're going to go ahead and start uh, highlighting this. And just from what I've uh, already kind of seen, uh, at least from here and with the original image, I feel like there are too many different colors uh, at play here. Maybe the head should be you know, closer to the color of the body or closer to the color of the, the other legs. I'm not really sure, but I think choosing to make the tail and the head a different color, not really the best uh, choice in terms of color to this piece. But again, I'm really just kind of sticking with the uh, original initial image and uh, playing around with that. But I th do think, uh, in order to kind of show that a little bit, for the highlight of the uh, alien head, I want to play around with a lighter, possibly a little bit bluer of a color. So for that, I'm going to come up to more of a mid-tone uh, in, in that range and get my brush a little bit larger and kind of play with that highlight a little bit more. So you probably won't see a lot of that initial uh, darker purple here. And again, highlight coming from the right, so everything sort of plays into that. And up around the eyebrow here, sort of the top of the eye, you probably want it to be a little bit lighter to where the uh, maybe the top of the eyelid would be and then a little bit darker up around underneath. I want to think about where those uh, individual sections stick out, and anything that sticks out is going to capture a little bit more light. have an indentation here, so I can keep that a little darker. Maybe up around this cheekbone with the eye a little bit lighter. To the back of the head, we can keep it darker, but again, a little section of the eyelid here, make it go ahead and make that lighter. And this I'm just kind of going to paint in a little bit pretty lightly. And from there, we can actually maybe do another slightly brighter highlight. And I'm going to take a little bit bluer again, and give it just a little extra flare on some of those real high points. So up around the top of the eye, cheekbone towards the bottom, a little bit on the nose, a little on the other eye, just to really accent, accent those areas. And then with our dark, as we did before, think about our shadows and indentations on where every single one of those little things sits. I like I take the opacity down a little. Don't need it to be super dark here, just enough to add a few indications. And playing around with that. So now we have the highlight side, the shadow side. I'm actually going to play around with some this sort of this extra highlight a little bit. Don't need quite as much of it. Can sort of blur it out or blend it out into another section and this side of the dark is a little too dark. Can just kinda pull it up to the edge a little more. Right about like that. And as you can see things are really starting to come together. So the only thing we have left now is the tail. And from the original image, that's sort of a very dark blue, uh, almost a black color. And there's a little bit sort of a highlighty green in here a little bit too. Uh, not sure the initial intentions on that, but we are going to play around with that a uh, little bit more in depth. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that uh, nice dark blue and start painting that right into the tail. Coloring outside the lines. 
And I should make note here that I am, again, going with the idea of this is more of a, a flowy, uh, ribbony tail, but if you wanted to do uh, more of a uh, round, sort of natural tail, you want to think about something maybe like a hose. So when a hose kind of wraps around and, and comes around itself, it's because it's round, it's not going to be uh, sort of down to that crisp point. Instead, it just kind of be a little bit thinner, and you're going to see uh, where those sections of the hose would uh, then sort of overlap a little bit. You're never going to get that sort of crisp X-like edge as you would with a uh, something along the lines of a, uh, of a, of a ribbon or, uh, or something flat. But again, the best choice for this is just to pick something, uh, pick a material that you would think is, is very similar and look at that as a reference. So if your idea is a round tail, find, you know, lizard tails, something like that that's curled around, at the very least a hose or a round flexible tube to give you that uh, idea. Or again, with a ribbon, you can probably search, you know, flexible ribbony things if you don't want, if you don't have one just uh, sort of sitting around the house. So again, uh, color choices, a lot of this is very, very strange. Uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, so the blue, I think with the blue we're going to come down to a nice dark and towards the uh, purple a little bit more uh, to give a, a general idea of uh, just sort of trying to, un I'm basically at this point trying to unify uh, the rest of the color of the piece a little bit more. And here I'm kind of following the contour of the tail uh, to kind of wrap around uh, the detail and, and the the, the shading a little bit better. You can sort of follow the the roundness of the tail, make circles with the brush. But uh, for this, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, toss things in pretty loosely. And I'm going to flip back to the original image, taking a look at those lines one more time. Uh, the highlights are anywhere from sort of that purpley color to a lot of that green. I'm actually going to choose sort of my body green in this case, because again, I want to play with unification a little bit more uh, for the overall image and just start sort of adding some uh, minor highlights and things into uh, the tail as well. And again, uh, as I've said uh, throughout the course of this video, since our light is coming from the upper right, uh, or sort of the middle right, uh, you would do want to take that into account in terms of where you're adding your highlights. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller on the brush for some extra little units of the highlights. I think I'll throw a couple of those rounder strokes in here. And right about like that, all the color is coming together uh, in the piece. Now one thing I do want to do before we move on to uh, sort of the final uh, touch-ups and everything like that, is I want to point out that, again, the color of the head here does not feel unified to the rest of the piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, magic wand select tool and select just the inner section of the head. Not looking at the eyes, just looking at the color of uh, the purple head. And with that, I'm going to use my uh, uh, hue and saturation adjuster just to show some uh, variations, and probably going to keep one of those variations as well. So I'm going to pull that, I'm going to drag my uh, little arrow around, and I'm going to drag it into the blue a little bit more, and into the green. And with this blue, I find that it's much more unified to the color of the tail as well. I might lean towards the green just a little bit more and bring up the saturation. And from that you get a much more unified image rather than sort of that stark uh, purple difference. So I'm going to keep that for the final uh, difference, uh, final set here. And uh, with this I can feel that things are very much more unified. The color of the eyes in this case then kind of reflects into the body and everything kind of comes together in a much more uh, nice fashion. Now, from this, uh, I'm going to look back at the original one more time. The background, again, uh, if we do just a straight 
uh, black um, black and white grayscale it, you can see that the background doesn't necessarily offset the figure quite uh, quite as much. So at this point, for the first time uh, since the start of this video, I'm going to grab a new layer and put it right underneath uh, the figure that we've been doing. And from there, I'm going to grab a color, uh, maybe not that sort of weird salmon color that we've seen before, uh, but maybe something a little bit lighter. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper and take that sort of, it's a little bit more of a red, a little bit more of an orange. I'm going to take that into uh, a bit of a grayer pink. Uh, so it's roughly the same color, but a much uh, brighter um, tint of the overall uh, piece. And from that, Oh, that's the wrong layer. And from that, we can get a much more uh, unified background, something that uh, is interesting for the character, but at the same time, uh, very interesting for the viewer as well. And with that background, one thing that we can do is add a few uh, slightly darker, uh, more toned shadows underneath the creature uh, to kind of give the illusion that it is sitting on top of at least some kind of an object. And maybe it's climbing across the floor, uh, maybe it's just sort of uh, walking along, who really knows? But uh, a little bit of shadow underneath uh, the creature will give uh, at least some kind of illusion of depth. And underneath it you're thinking that the creature is also casting perhaps a shadow a little bit behind it. This adds a little bit more contrast, a little bit more offset. And if we were to take uh, both uh, sections of what I've just painted over and thrown those into grayscale, you can see that it's much uh, much, uh, I don't want to say much nicer, but compared to the original, which was more of a plain, uh, very, you don't have a lot of distinct values, uh, there are a lot more distinct values, at least in my painted over version. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, uh, I, and uh, this was more of a sort of redo than a critique. But uh, I do want to talk about the differences between what I've done and the original image. So, looking at the origi original image, there is a lot of interesting things happening here. Uh, the piece itself has a lot going for it. Uh, the creature is very interesting, it's very dynamic, it's a, sort of very mobile, and, in and uh, it, it's interesting to look at. The choice of color and uh, the lack of difference in value and contrast make it a little bit difficult to uh, look at as a viewer, and you don't necessarily know where to go. Your eye is a little bit confused. Uh, I'm not sure entirely of all the shapes I'm looking at in the forms. I don't know how uh, realistic they seem despite being a very uh, fantasy oriented character. One thing I was able to do before I started sketching over the uh, initial image was start looking at what kind of forms exist within the flat shapes that do exist. Now, of course, the uh, original artist, uh, Tsuku Bain, is uh, animation and cartoon oriented in the way uh, he looks at his uh, characters. However, uh, one thing you want to make sure of is that whether or not you're making a character uh, seem uh, cartoony or more realistic, you want to make sure you have your values in place. And if you're uploading something as a standalone character, you probably want to make it seem more like an illustration than just a flat 2D image. Uh, and, that, and that, again, that's slightly more of just an opinion than uh, an overall uh, goal. But again, if you're displaying uh, a character for the first time, you might want to consider uh, the overall value and the overall form of the character rather than creating a more simplified uh, creature. So again, with my paint over, uh, the colors are you know unified, the head and the tail seem more uh, together, everything is sort of is tied together a little bit better. Um, the uh, initial texture and everything, I mean, again, you can play around with that infinitely. And one thing you can do from this point is you don't necessarily have to leave on those initial sketch lines. One thing you can do at this point is take those sketches off, and with that base tone and color, start sort of reworking uh, the overall shape and use that as a base, and start really playing around with those lines, rendering it out, making it a more complete drawing. But then again, if you want to just leave it as more of a sketch, you can leave on those initial lines and uh, just have that color sitting underneath. And then once you get your sort of sub background sort of going on, you get the idea of sort of values underneath, making sure that you keep in mind where your lights and your shadows are hitting, and the whole picture, again, becomes much more unified. So I do want to apologize how long this video has uh, went for was uh, a little bit more in-depth than uh, I was actually originally even shooting for. 
But again, there was a lot in this piece that I wanted to talk about, a lot of things that I wanted to cover, and really kind of bring to light in terms of what makes a piece sort of feel alive and feel uh, more interesting. Again, I mean no uh, disrespect to the original artist, but again, you know, you, you look at a lot of these things and uh, it's like, wait, maybe you understand it, maybe you don't, uh, who knows, but uh, this is what my initial impressions were and my uh, suggestions for your next project. So if you have a piece of your own that you would like some feedback on, uh, whether it be a video or not, uh, feel free to send me an email at cinderblockstudios at live.com. You can find, uh, just email me uh, your image, say, hey, can you help me out with this? Just be nice about it, be sincere, be genuine. Uh, don't just send me random images. But if you do want some feedback, I'd be more than happy to uh, send it your way. And if you feel that you would rather have a more in-depth critique like this and uh, sort of redoing, re-overview of whatever project you're working on, uh, just be sure to add that into the email and I will get it into a video. So, as always, this has been from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and subscribe for more art videos. See you guys next time.